in this video, I'm going to show you the best planets to make outposts on. There's a bunch of different reasons why you'd want to make outposts on certain planets, and I have a bunch of really good ones for you to try out. While some of the planets on this list are accessible even at level 1, some of them you'll need to go to your science tab, and you'll need to start getting some planetary habitation to get some of these ones. Mainly level 1, but in some cases level 2 or level 3. But a lot of these you also won't need any at all. Just keep that in mind if you can't make an outpost on one of the ones I'm going to show you. If you've never done outposts before and you need help, go check the description for my Outpost 2.0 guide that'll help you out for everyone else let's go ahead and get right into this the first planet on the list is the most overused one in every video ever so you go to narion up to the top right of alpha centauri there's androphon you can scan for resources you can find an area that has mountains you can see on the right mountains and you find an area that has craters on the right and then you try to find a split biome if you've never done split biomes you just got to keep clicking like this and clicking off and trying to move it closer and closer to the craters and back over to the mountains until you get a split biome so then you just keep landing, and if you don't get it, try again. Keep generating new maps. Every time you land it on a planet, if you don't know, it generates a new map. So just keep trying until you get a split biome. A split biome will look something like this. Sometimes it's not very obvious, but on this planet it is. And so you'll be able to follow this split until you find an outpost that has iron and has aluminum. Which the reason you want those is because those are used for making solid storages and for making adaptive frames and things. So... This is like the basis of everything. You should always have a an outpost on this planet that makes iron and aluminum. Highly recommend this. For the next planet on the list, you're going to go to the right of Alpha Centauri. There's a solar system called Jaffa. Over in Jaffa, you'll find a planet. There's Jaffa 7b. So you're going to show the resources, and you're going to look around for an area that has tungsten as well as titanium. And you're going to go to an area where they kind of meet up like that. They should be in the same biome. So this one's not nearly as hard as doing a split biome thing. And you're going to want to make a planet here in order to get titanium and tungsten. And the reason you need this is because titanium is used for warehouse storage, which is manufactured goods. And then tungsten is also used for a ton of different things from extractors. And I forget what else. I just know I burned through thousands of it before in the past. So you definitely want one here to collect these resources too. The next planet on the list is at a solar system north of Alpha Centauri called Andromas. And this one's another split biome. This one's going to be kind of hard to do, but it's totally doable. So if I have an outpost here already that's on the border of the craters and the frozen plains. And you're going to want to do it in an area like this, maybe, I don't know. Either way, just make a split biome. And if you have a split biome here, here and you find one just like the iron aluminum one, you'll be able to get beryllium and copper together. So we have beryllium and we have copper. And both of those are used extensively in outpost development. So having this is just gives you access to these resources that you need in bulk. Very, very nice outpost. Nice resource mix here. You can also make, I think it was Tau grade rheostats from these if you need them. So it's just it's really good materials here. After that, there's one more major resource planet that you're going to want to consider. So at Alpha Centauri itself, there is a moon down here called Lavelle. And Lavelle has cobalt nickel and it's only frozen. So you don't need a lot of planetary habitation. So you're just going to go here and go to somewhere on the border between the nickel and the cobalt. And then you're going to want to make an outpost that has nickel and cobalt at it. Because nickel and cobalt are used extensively in outposts as well. Once you have all four of the previous ones, including this one, then you have like the materials to just make bulk amounts of storage, make tons of extractors. You know, you're missing little things for some of the extractors, but you got the, the major components done for the bulk ingredients of an outpost. As for the next planet on this list, we're going to go to Sol. Now, this one, you need planetary habitation level 3. It is none other than Venus from our actual solar system in real life. And what you're going to do is you're going to land and then keep regenerating the uh, maps until you find a civilian outpost. So basically, you land and generate a map until you see this icon. You scan all the things around you, like that, for example. And you'll see one that has this icon. Go check it out. It's not always a civilian outpost, but when you finally find one, then you're going to build an outpost right next to it. And you're going to put down a sleeping bag. And that's it. And so the reason we do this outpost is so you can come here whenever you want and sleep here. And one hour here is 100 hours of universal time. So it's a great way to fast forward time, make your storages fill in other outposts, things like that. But the reason that we do the civilian outpost is if you're going to make one here, you might as well make one next to a civilian outpost. Because then you can farm out when you go to sell things. You know, vendors don't have enough money, which maybe they'll fix in a patch later on. But when I made this, vendors didn't have crap for money. Uh, you can go here in the vendor. Has, there's a vendor in these, and they have 5,000, and there's chairs right in front of them. And here, you only have to wait one hour for the shop to reset. So you can wait one hour, sell 5,000 credits worth of items, and repeat, which is the fastest way to unload your items. You might as well kill two birds with one stone, have a great outpost here on Venus. So now I'm going to shift a little from, like, pre-rack resource planets to a uh, more interesting concept. So one we want to look at now is Voli. Now, this is not what you're going to be expecting. 
We're going to go to Voli Alpha, and this is not for building an outpost. This is to go to Neon Core itself. It's one of the most important places to go to when building outposts. When you come in, you'll be here. You turn to the left, and there's Zegart's Outfitters. And this guy has a ton of specialty parts for outposts. He has drilling rigs. He has aldemite drilling rigs. He has all sorts of fancy stuff. You might get substrate molecular sieves. All sorts of stuff. So you want to go here often and then refresh the shop by waiting for 48 hours of universal time. Which brings me to the next planet that's good for outposts in this video, which is Voli Gamma. If you go to Voli Gamma and you make an outpost, Voli Gamma's time, it's not as good as Venus, but it's still really good for moving time forward. So all you do is go here, put down an outpost, put down a sleeping bag, and one hour here is 19 hours of universal time. So you only need to sleep for three hours here. So if you ever need a bunch of supplies, what you can do is have an outpost here like that. You can go to Seagart's Outfitters and then buy a bunch of, you know, things that you need, drilling rigs and whatever else for your extractors and things. And then you can just go over here to wait three hours and then go back, which is way faster than waiting on Voli Alpha. Waiting on Voli Alpha takes, I don't know if it was 36 local hours or 48, takes more than one rest to refresh the shop. So this is a great way to refresh Seagart's Outfitters really quickly and get a ton of materials that you need for the outposts. Now let's take a look at a planet to the right of Alpha Centauri. There's a solar system called Lantana, and it has one of the best planets for outposts in the entire game. There's Lantana 7, and this planet is insane. So you're going to need to make another split biome. So you're going to want to find a split between the one that has gold, which is Plateau, and then the one that has the silver, which is the rocky desert. So right here, you can see I've made these ones on a split. I was able to get a split biome and be able to make these outposts. So here's an example base that I have here. And you can see it can get pretty crazy here because of all the stuff that's here. The only thing that you need to bring in is antimony. And then you can make semi-metal wafers and paramagnon conductors. Additionally, by default, you can make zero wire on this planet if you get the split biome because you have silver and copper in the same place, which lets you make zero wire at a fabricator or manually. So it's just a great way to get prereq resources, get XP and stuff. I mean, you can grind out the, like I had in a previous video, I think it was a 40,000 XP per minute. I can't remember if that was that or the 60,000 for making paramagnon conductors. Or you make the semi-metal wafers and send them on to an indikite world or whatever else. There's the nuclear fuel rod worlds that need semi-metal wafers. So it's just a great intermediate planet that has a lot of resources that are really important. Also, this planet has helium in the air. So on top of having all these things, it also has helium-3 from these extractors that you can put all around and just extract it from the air. So it makes this one an amazing off-world shipping hub, like an intermediate point for a lot of different crafts that you can do. So that's why this is probably the best planet in the entire game for any serious manufacturing or crafting in this in Starfield. Now we're going to take a look at a planet that has some organic resources. So Cheyenne up here, or no, Cheyenne, Shay, I, I can't remember how people said I was supposed to pronounce it. I probably did it wrong again. So you're going to go to Kodos. And the only reason you'll ever want to go to Kodos is because there are plants on this planet that you can scan that then you can harvest for solvent. So I have an outpost like this, just tons of greenhouses to get solvent. If you want to get a greenhouse, you're going to have to go to your skills. And then under science, there is botany. You only need botany level one. And then you'll just have the greenhouse level one to get higher level ones unlocked. You'll unlock them at a research bench. And that's it. And then you just go around and scan all the plants on this planet until you find the one that has solvent. And then you just make them using this and water. And then you output solvent. And solvent's used for a ton of manufacturing. It's used for the indikite wafers. It's used for nuclear fuel rods and a bunch of other things. So it's a good resource to know where it is and how to get it if you're going to get really deep into outposts. Now we're going to take a look at a super end game advanced planet that you're going to want to use later on if you're really, really far into outposts. At the very top right of the entire map, there is Fermi. And at this uh, solar system, you can find a planet here called Fermi 7A that only has fauna, has three fauna. And then there's a planet up here called Fermi 3, which has flora. Well, the thing is that Fermi 7A is at least the only one I'm aware of. It's one of the only planets, if not the only planet in the entire game where you can get a unique or super rare. I forget if it's unique or if it's just like the one below unique, exotic, I guess, uh, resource that's used in outposts. So this planet has... Uh, fauna that will give you memory substrate so you'll need to put down an animal husbandry facility and scan the animals on here and you'll need the husbandry skill i think it's called or zoology skill under science and then you'll be able to domesticate animals and make this facility and then what you can do is there's a like i said there's an 
animal on this planet that will give you memory substrate. But there's no fiber on this planet. So you need fiber and water. So this planet has water on it, but you need fiber. So you're going to have to make an outpost on Fermi 3. And then you're going to have to domesticate a plant that gives fiber. And you either manually bring it over or you set up cargo links between the two and feed that fiber and water into your animal husbandry facility. And then you'll be able to get memory substrate, which is an extremely important material because it's used in order to make substrate molecular sieves later on, which are used for level three uh, extractors of certain types and a lot of other important crafts and the outpost, you know, making section of the game so you're definitely going to want to do this one if you get to the late game outpost stuff and while we're over here to the corner of the map there's one right by here the top of the right of the whole map called piras i think is that what it's called and you're going to go to piras 8a or v-i-i-i-a or whatever and you're going to want to go and scan the two primordial fauna on this planet and then you're going to want to make a landing area with some animal husbandry facilities. So there's these animals. And if you didn't know this, this is part of a video I have for how to get 15,000 XP per minute killing animals. With your domesticated animals, you can kill them for XP and they won't fight back. So this is a great way to farm XP. Now, this is not the ideal setup. If you want to see the ideal setup where I have like a circle around me, do everything right. Uh, there's a video in the description somewhere about getting 15,000 XP per minute killing animals or something like that. And the reason you do this over like some of the crafting XP ones is because this will allow you to level up all of your combat skills as well. Do all the challenges, you know, get 30 range crit hits and things like that. So that makes this one one of the best plants in the game. We really do this. You could do this on a lot of plants, but we do it on this one because these guys just give a ton of XP and they don't seem to lag the game as much as some of the ones on other planets I tested. I tested a ton of things. These ones gave the highest XP, the least amount of lag. Their hitbox are a little weird, but they're overall the best. The next one is to the top right of Alpha Centauri. There's Ixel, and it's more of the solar system. There's a planet here called Ixel 8A that I go to for helium, plutonium, and uranium. Uh, I don't really use uranium too much on it, but you can. And then there's a planet here that has helium and also has antimony. Both these are really nice. They're not like the greatest planets ever, but I figured they were worth a mention because I've actually used them as optimal planets when making vitinium fuel rods, uh, mainly because... You don't have to use inter system cargo links to then fuel the plutonium planet and the antimony planet. You can just use inter, like normal cargo links on this solar system. So it's just a nice resource mix between two different planets that are used in a lot of other outpost crafts and different, like, you know, things that you make. Now let's look at some more end game planets. So we got Dakarin over here in the middle of the solar system. And there's a planet here called Dark Dakarin 7b. And it has one of the unique resources, Vitinium, which are used for Vitinium fuel rods. It also has Uranium, and it has Helium-3. So it's just a nice planet that has a bunch of different resources. Now, getting all three of those together on the same, um, in the same outpost is not really going to be easy, or maybe not even possible, potentially. But getting uh, Vitinium and Helium together, or Uranium and Helium together, it is possible. But you got to find a split biome of craters. Craters can have a split biome where it's crater and crater. So you would just go to an area where it's like a split here and then try to run around and find it. You'd have to go look at my Vitinium Fuel Rod video, try to, you know, get to this planet on that one. It has timestamps on it. Uh, it was the 300,000 XP per minute farm. That's in the description of this video as well, I think. But yeah, the, you can do it on this. It's just a weird, really difficult one. End game one, you got to get a split biome in, in the craters. Craters can have split biomes. Now another end game plant to the bottom right. There's this one down here called Katadid. And it has a planet that has Indikite on it, which is used for Indikite wafers, which are used in a lot of endgame things. Uh, it's used in multiple of my videos to farm XP. It's just a really good planet. For, uh, it's a really good planet just because Indikite is a really good resource. There's also a planet nearby if you want to ship helium. That's helium in the air. So you can always go here to get helium and maybe another resource while you're at it. Because you can actually get uranium here or something else. Another honorable mention to the top left of Alpha Centauri, you can find Car Carine. I don't know how to say it. And in here, you'll be able to find a planet that's called Carine 3A. And this one has Rothakite, and it's just an easy one to just go. If you, if, I should probably mention here, so I'll mention about scanning. You won't be able to see these without, with scanning unless you have scanning leveled up. But uh, if you do, you can get Rothakite. It's a really easy way to just make money. You just make an outpost with a ton of storage with extracting Rothakite. Go sleep on Venus for like 48 hours or, you know, 48 local hours, and then come back. All the storage is full. Delete the outpost lug it into your ship and then go off to sell it and you already have like you know half a million credits of rothakite or something like that and all these super rare ones in order to do them you have to go to your skills and there is science and there's scanning and you'll need scanning level four to see those super rare ones like that and level three for you know the less rare ones level two for things like titanium or maybe one even i'm not sure but either way, that's what you'll need in order to see those on the map if you didn't see them. Another planet worth mentioning is to the top left of Alpha Centauri. It's up here. It's Alpha Andraste. 
and there is Alpha Andraste 3. Now, one of the plants on this planet will give you biosuppressant, which is or which is very rare and can be used in a lot of crafts. So that's an important one to know where it is. Another really important end game planet is way up to the top right. There's an area up here, a solar system called Bardeen. And here you can go to Bardeen 3. I want to remember that one. Okay, it's this one. Bardeen 3. And here you can find a plant that gives lubricant. It's the only one I'm aware of in the entire solar system where you can get lubricant from a plant, which is always better than getting it from the animals. So you can go there and get lubricant, which is also used in a ton of different outpost mechanics. And then there's a planet that's right under your nose. It's Alpha Centauri. There's a planet here that you've all been to called Jemison, which turns out is an amazing planet to actually make an outpost. So what you're going to do is make an outpost in the cold area. There are two plants you need to scan there so you can get toxin and metabolic agent. Also, when you are in the cold area, the frozen mountains, it has argon gas as well as water. So you can get water, you can get argon gas, you can make greenhouses, you can store all those things up and then wait, and then you can research performance enhancing drugs one, and then you can make amps, and then you can make a drug farm that makes a million credits per hour or something like that. Um, it basically makes infinite money, it's just a million credits per hour is capped by selling on Venus with the thing I mentioned earlier in this video. Uh, but you can get infinite money and you have amps and you can run around with amps all the time and run faster than normal 30% movement speed all the time basically which I, I've, I always do I'm always running 30% faster so that's a great planet amazing thing definitely check that out if you want more on that one it's in the description of this video it's how to get rich by selling drugs in Starfield or something like that uh, that's a great planet great spot great combo of things and that's gonna be it for this video and that probably just scratches the surface there are so many planets there are a bunch of planets out there where you can get like split biomes with a bunch of different resources I mean I've seen screenshots where people have found like seven resources all in one you know outpost or something like that so there's crazy combos you can find and stuff but this video and this list i have here should get you started with some of the most basic amazing ones that you can use that are most universally usable that are used for a lot of different things you know like the iron the aluminum the adaptive frames the tungsten the titanium uh even just like lubricant and solvent you things like that are used a lot and you'll find out why later on as you play the game more and do more outpost stuff but hopefully that helped you out, guys. I just want to make a quick video on what the best planets are for outposts. Some great ones to get you started. Hopefully now you have a better idea of what you want to do with outposts in Starfield.